Hello everyone. So let me start off with a little reminder of what we talked about in the last video. Last time our discussion was centered around the thesis of skepticism about the external world. We discussed an argument that challenged, for example, my claim to know that I have hands right now. In that video, the kind of knowledge that we were concerned with was the knowledge that we get through sense perception. So for example, I think that I know that I have hands right now, and I think that I know this because I'm perceiving them right now. Today we're going to look more closely at the phenomena of perception itself. We're going to think philosophically about the nature of perception. In particular, we're going to examine the question, what are the things that we directly perceive? Do we, for example, directly perceive external objects that exist independently of our minds? Or do we only ever perceive appearances of external objects? Can I perceive the flesh and bone hand that I have? Or when I attempt to gaze at my hand, is the thing that I really see just a subjective mental image that exists inside of my mind? In order to really see what's at issue, let me present to you the two sides in this debate. Um, we're going to look at two positions, uh, two positions that philosophers have offered on the nature of perception. First, let's look at uh, a view called sense data theory. The basic contention of sense data theory is that we never see external mind independent objects directly. That is because according to their view, we only ever directly uh, perceive uh, sense data that are fleeting and mind dependent. In other words, what we really see when we perceive something are actually subjective entities that exist inside of our minds. We will call these internal subjective entities sense data, but they're also sometimes called appearances or mental images. As you can see, I, uh, I drew a picture on the blackboard to help us understand this view. Um, the idea here behind sense data theory is that when I gaze upon an object, the object emits a light ray which causes um, my sensory organs to produce an image that's inside of my mind. Um, it causes my sense organs to produce a sense datum, which is then displayed in my mind for my consciousness to see. It's as if my mind contains a little uh, internal theater to it um, that displays to my consciousness the sense data or appearances of the objects that exist outside of me. This way of understanding perception is sometimes called uh, the Cartesian theater because Descartes thought of perception in this way and he had a profound influence on the subject. Okay, so what exactly are these sense data? What are these internal things that the sense data theory posits? Here are three defining traits. According to this view, the sense data are the things that we are directly aware of in perception. That is to say that we can know about them just by seeing them. We do not need to infer their existence from anything else. Secondly, the sense data are said to exist entirely inside our minds. Their existence depends on our perceiving them. When I perceive a sense data, it exists, and when I cease to perceive it, it fleets out of existence. And finally, it is claimed that the properties of sense data are entirely apparent to us. The properties that they appear to have are the properties that they actually have. So for example, if it appears to me that I'm perceiving a green leaf, then I must be experiencing a sense datum that is actually green and leaf shaped according to this theory. This also makes it very easy for me to come to know the properties of my sense data. For if I have an experience of a sense datum that appears to me to be green and leaf shaped, then I should be able to know that I have a green leaf shaped, shaped sense datum. I couldn't be mistaken about the matter. The other view of perception that we will consider is called direct realism. Basically, this view claims that we perceive external objects directly. When I perceive that I have hands, 
I am actually perceiving my hands, the hands themselves, the external objects. So this view denies the central claim of the sense data theory. It denies that our perception is mediated by our, first of all, directly seeing internal, um, internal sense data. What we see in a normal case of perception is not a figment of our consciousness. Rather, what we see is the external object itself. So properly understood, this debate between direct realism and the sense data theory is concerned with the nature of perception. The subject thus belongs to metaphysics. It's not really a theory of epistemology. And yet, it's clearly relevant to epistemology. How we come to know about ex the external world uh, does depend on which one of these views is correct. Put it this way. If the sense state of view were true, then I cannot see that I have hands directly. But if that's the case, then how, how do I come to know that I have hands? All that I see are my internal sense data that are caused by my hands. So if I'm to know that I have hands, I must be able to somehow infer that I have hands from what's going on inside my head. I must be able to in further existence from uh, the traces that they leave in my sense data. Or to put this idea in even plainer English, I'm gonna to have to first observe the patterns that are going on in my internal, uh, internal screen, and then come up with some kind of argument or reason on that basis to think that there are hands outside of my mind. It's as if the little internal screen inside my head displays the sense data and the sense data are just clues about what's going on outside of me, behind the screen. So in short, if the sense data theory were true, then our knowledge of the external world is probably very challenging. In fact, the skeptic David Hume uses this theory to argue that we don't really know anything about the world outside of our own minds. Um, according to him, I cannot really know that I have hands right now because I cannot, uh, so to speak, jump outside of my own head to see whether my, uh, whether my hands match the sense data that I have of them. If direct realism is true, on the other hand, then our knowledge of the external world might not be quite as challenging or mysterious. For if I can just see that I have hands directly, then perhaps I can just know that my hands exist. At least, on this view, I don't have to go through the same mental gymnastics to try to rationalize my belief that I have hands by appealing to the sense data inside of me. Given this, it would seem that the more attractive view is the, is the direct realist view. That is, if we want to believe that we have knowledge of the external world, then it would be more desirable if the direct realist view were correct. But unfortunately, we're doing philosophy here. So we can't just accept a view because it would make our life more easier. Um, we actually have to look at the arguments for and against each of the positions. So that then brings us to the question, what are the arguments for and against these positions? What are the arguments for the sense state of view? By far, the most popular argument for the sense state of view is called the argument from illusion. Basically, the sense data theorist observes that we have various optical illusions and that when we do, we don't take ourselves to be seeing something that's real. Instead, we take ourselves uh, to be seeing something else. Uh, it must be like the sense data are playing tricks on us. At least that's the gist of their argument. Let's make it a bit more precise. For our purposes, a perceptual illusion will occur whenever we fix our gaze upon an object and the object appears to have properties that we do not take it to actually have. So for example, when I see a straight stick half submerged into water, um, the stick will appear bent to me because of light refraction. So the stick appears bent even though we do not take it to be actually bent. The apparent bentness of the stick is an illusion. Or if you want another example, 
If I were to stare at a stick right now and then press one of my eyeballs from the side, then it'll appear to me as if there were actually two sticks, even though I know or I think that there's only one stick. A number of philosophers have taken these considerations to be conclusive proof for the sense state of view. Here's what David Hume has to say on the matter. The table which we see seems to diminish as we remove farther from it, but the table which exists independent from us suffers no alteration. It was, therefore, nothing but its image which was present to the mind. These are the obvious dictates of reason, and no man who reflects ever doubted that the existences which we consider when we say this house and that tree are nothing but perceptions in the mind and fleeting copies or representations of other existences, which we remain or which remain uniform and independent. With all of Hume's confidence, you would expect to find an argument in here that's beyond refutable. But what is this argument exactly? Well, from what Hume has provided us, we seem to have the following premises and conclusion. Premise one, the thing which we directly see appears to diminish. Premise two, but the real external object, that is, uh, the table, does not diminish. Therefore, we do not directly see the external object. What we directly see is something else. It's mental image, or also known as sense data. Or consider another case of illusion. Suppose that I take a straight stick half submerged in water and it appears bent to me. The sense data theorist would offer this argument. Premise one, the object that one directly perceives appears bent. The real stick is not bent, it is straight. Therefore, one does not directly perceive the stick. According to this argument, what I directly see is uh, a bent thing. And so they, it concludes that what I'm seeing is the sense data that's inside my internal uh, theater screen. Now, if these arguments were to establish their conclusions, then presumably we could extrapolate that in all cases, we only ever see sense data. Um, so that now brings us to the all important questions. Are these arguments sound? Are these arguments valid? Are their premises true? Well, it does seem like the premises are true. But are these arguments valid? Well, I'm just going to leave it there. These arguments may have problems, but there's still much more debate to be had over this issue. I'm not going to follow up and give the entire debate. But if you do want more information on this topic, then I think that for the first time, I'm going to link you to something that I've actually written myself. In the description of this video, you can find my own uh, opinionated overview of this topic.